Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Today we're looking at a truck that, well, a lot of people love to hate on, the Honda Ridgeline. Now that back there behind me, that's a 2020 Ridgeline and we did a full review on that towing, payload, a little bit of off-road, so look forward to that in the future. But today we are going to compare that second generation Ridgeline with this first generation Ridgeline to really see what changed. And we're going to meet the owner of that 2008 Ridgeline right there, that's my brother Matt. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive right into it. All right, Matt. Well, thanks for bringing out your Ridgeline here today. You even uh, brought it out in a matching color, <laughs> all black. So why don't you tell us about this truck? And I love the story about how you got this Ridgeline. So let the viewers know. All right. Well, it is uh, currently September and uh, this truck came to me back in May. And how the story goes is I actually work at a Honda dealer and someone brought this in on a tow truck. It wasn't running. It had sat in their driveway for six months and he dropped it off and said, okay, let me know what it needs. So one of the other guys, not even myself pulled it in and it needs a starter and an alternator and a battery and it's getting up there oh and it needs a timing belt and so by the time we finished actually getting through everything that the truck needed just for maintenance and just, just to run in general he was looking at about seven thousand dollars give or take now a lot of that was labor and a lot of that was cheaper parts and a bunch of other stuff so Basically, I got talking with the guy, and he was a very pleasant man, and we chatted for a while. Um, he took a shine to me, I guess, and we talked about, I have my first child coming, and I need a four-door a four -door car, and I have a little two-door Tacoma, and I kind of need to step up my, my truck game, as it were, here. And uh, we chatted for a while back and forth, and essentially, we agreed to sell, he agreed to sell me the truck. And I basically said to him, you're going to get rid of it for scrap, so I'll give you $200 more than whatever the scrapper's gonna offer you. So we agreed on 500 bucks for the truck. And everything was all great. A couple days later, he came back, we met at a different location with all the paperwork and we sat down and we talked for, I wanna say two hours. So we chatted for two hours about life and we waxed prophetic about having <laughs> children and all kinds of fun stuff. And at the end of it, we signed all the paperwork and I handed him the envelope with the 500 bucks and he just said to me, you know what, you keep it. He says, this truck was for, he was mine. I bought it brand new. My daughters have all driven it. He's like, I was going to give it to my daughter to drive out west. So he obviously had some faith in the old girl. <laughs> and he just said, you know what? It's better in your hands. I'm happy to see it go to someone that can use it. And here it sits now driving because I uh, salvaged a wrecker alternator and a wrecker starter. And I put the labor into it to get it running. And I've had it on the road about three months now. I've put about 8,000 K on it. And I, I keep saying this and I'm flogging it to death, but I mean, for a free truck, I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, that's the best price for a truck. Exactly. Free. So, uh, how many kilometers are on it? Uh, as it sits, 226. 226,000. That's yeah. not crazy. And uh, so, you mentioned some of the parts you put on. What are the other issues with it? I did notice some rust. Um, yeah, I mean, it is an 08. So we're looking at a 12 year old truck and it did live its life in central Ontario, the you know salt burying road capital <laughs> of the world. Oof, yep. So the underneath it looked a little rough. There was a couple bits and pieces here that I was like, eh, that's not gonna last forever. But again, circle back to free truck. <laughs> and <laughs> ultimately it was in, in terrible shape, but I can show you a couple of the spots that are getting it the worst. And my plan is before the snow comes this winter to just get in there with Bondo and 20 pounds of rocker guard and it's going to be ugly but it's going to last me a while <laughs> yeah and now matt i want to compare your truck to this new truck and really see what changed between first gen ridgeline and second gen well let's measure some stuff and let's have a look cool and first let's look at the powertrain so over here on the new ridgeline and we pop that earth cream covers off so you can see uh we're talking about 280 horsepower 262 pound feet of torque sent through a nine speed automatic and you know what the nine speed in our time with it has worked pretty well and we towed a 3,000 pound trailer and the torque down low actually wasn't too bad I wasn't disappointed um, why don't you tell us what you got over here in your ridge line and how you feel about it <laughs> so I mean comparing the two it's the same block setup they're both a three and a half liter uh, now I'm only looking at 247 horse and 245 foot pounds of torque and that is mated to a five-speed automatic transmission um, I've driven them both and comparably speaking this is a lighter truck with a little bit more power it's got a little bit more jam I'm not gonna lie about that yeah but I mean 
I'm not upset about this thing. What this about thing... VTech, yo? Oh, you don't want to talk about VTech. When I hit VTech, you, you ain't gonna see me. You're just seeing brake lights off in the distance. Um, but I do have the uh, a proper VTech system, both intake and exhaust cam, full locking VTech rocker arms, the whole nine. I've still got a fluid power steering pump versus electronic power steering over here in this model. Got it. I have a, an actual ECU to run my cruise control versus all computer based over here in the new model. Um, there's obviously some very big changes. Yeah. And I mean, the, the most obvious one you can see is weight reduction. I've got cast aluminum and cast aluminum intake and valve covers. And over here we've got plastic valve covers, plastic intake, i.e. why this truck's a little bit lighter. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Honda strips 97 pounds about out of the new truck compared to the old one, but this truck is also bigger. This truck is a few inches longer. The wheelbase is longer. It's almost an inch wider. So that's the thing. They were able to make it bigger and lighter and uh, probably a little bit more efficient as well. Now, I think what we got to talk about next is sort of the argument that the Ridgeline isn't a truck. And I think a lot of it has to do with styling. On this new model, they tried to make it look more truck-like. I'm yeah. not sure they succeeded, though. I mean, looking just at the grills, I think the old grill looks a little beefier. I think one of the running jokes amongst myself and other Honda techs is this is just a pilot with a truck bed. Yeah. And it goes for this as well, don't get me wrong. Uh, this is not more trucky in by any stretch of the imagination. And Honda is like what we originally prefaced was one of the favorite trucks to hate yeah and i mean i've owned rams fords chevys toyotas i've owned every other make except for a nissan every other make of truck you can buy and yes this is just an suv with a truck bed <laughs> but for the little bit of stuff i do with it i mean i towed a trailer here today i had to move my mother-in-law's barbecue from her cottage to her house yesterday just to have that little bit of extra yeah throw it in the back i got straps down in my trunk throw a few straps on stuff and off we go That's perfect it's, ridgeline stuff it, and, I, and i got the back seat for when the baby comes okay it's, well, do I need? You mentioned the trunk, so let's go around back. Sure thing. And before we get all the way around back, styling wise, this is what I was talking about here, right? This whole flying buttress thing that Honda did on the first gen. I think it's very polarizing. I think some people absolutely love it, and then I think some people hate it. And then, yeah, you can look over at the new truck. They really made it look like a more, you know, a proper mid size pickup, or I guess like the other mid size pickups on the market. I don't know which one I feel better about. In a way, I think this is cooler. It's more unique. It's got it looks a, a little more like an El Camino. It's got a Colorado <laughs> Avalanche vibe to it. It does, you know? And um, yeah, I don't know. That's totally subjective. What isn't subjective is size. And straight up on the new Ridgeline, they made the bed bigger. It's longer and it's wider. However, on the old Ridgeline, the bed is actually deeper. So Matt, why don't you go measure the wall over there? All right. We're gonna see how deep this bed is. And I think that's really important because when you are hauling things that are tall, you want to have a deep bed as deep as possible to make sure it's, you know, sitting down in nice so, and low. I mean, if you kind of want to use my finger as a guide there. Sure. We're going to look at about 19 and a quarter. Yeah. But of course, I don't know if you can get this at this plane here because up at the front, I'm going to definitely have a little bit more height. Interesting. Yeah, because it really climbs up. I'm almost at 20 and a half. Gotcha. So almost an inch and a half difference from back to front. And what do you have for tie downs up there in the front? They're those up high tall tie downs. I've got downs. the tall ones up here and I've got the two where you can see my bungee cord over there is hooked up to. And I got the two on the low at the bottom end there. Gotcha. And then in the back, I've just got the one. Now the previous owner had a tri-fold soft tonneau on here. Yeah, that's so what these bars are for. I think there might have been another one up here, maybe. I don't know, and to be honest, I haven't dug into it. Yeah. But I mean, for what I've been doing, what I have is awesome. I got lots of options. Okay, so and the other thing I got to show off, of course, is the trunk. And this is another thing that's interesting. The old trunk, this trunk you're looking at here, is actually a little bit bigger, only about an inch length and width than the new trunk. But that's another thing Honda actually gave up was a little bit of trunk space. And I mean, how do you feel about the trunk? I think it's super cool. I think it's one of the coolest features on this thing. I mean, to the point where I use it just to put my groceries in. Yeah, well, that's the easy thing, the day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. I think that's what the trunk keeps, all keeps about. Keeps everything out of the weather, and you don't have to worry about strapping it down. Oh, yeah, it's down in the bucket. It's not going anywhere. Exactly. So now let's go over here and look at the new truck. We'll bring the tailgate down. I will mention that even for the new truck, not Honda very. has not damped the tailgate. I think and like I said, let's go ahead and measure the bed wall here now, Matt. But you can just see it's not as deep and it doesn't have that raise to it. The bed is totally flat, so it's going to be your so same. So again, using my... Actually, you can kind of see it on this one because I don't have such a lip. Yeah, so we're only just under 17. Just under 17 there. So that's two inches of depth. And this is flat. 
Now, yes. I, I don't know if this will translate at all, but I mean, this bed height is my mid chest, give or take. Yeah. Versus if I come back over here. Sure, what are you talking about on this one? My it's taller. upper chest, if you will. So this like that's new ridgeline bed maybe? is, yeah, give new ridgeline bed is definitely easier to access and get things into. However, it's shallower, but yeah. it's also longer and wider. And the width is a big deal because unlike other midsizers, you only have those little baby wheel arches. So, uh, you know, you're really not limited in your yeah. width. And you pick up the extra tie downs in this bed versus mine too. Yes, the so there you got a tie and a lower. And you've got the upper and lower you in the back two as well. in the rear. Another thing in our truck here is you got this neat little cubby and there's a plug in there. And I love that the plug is actually in the cubby so you can tuck things right in there out of the way when they're charging up or plugged in. And then finally, actually before I open the trunk, let me now look at this. So. It's interesting that for the new model year, they added this grit into the bed. Matt's bed is totally just smooth. And have you noticed it's a little slippery with some stuff I've, in there? You know, a couple of things I've had to put extra straps on or even to the point where I actually took the welcome mat out of the front of my house because it's rubber one day. When I had some stuff in there, I was worried about sliding. I and put it on the bottom. I'm interested. So you're actually uh, previously a Tacoma owner. Yep. And the Tacoma famously has that you know composite bed too. Have you noticed one being more slippery than the other? I would say equally. Yeah. Equally as slippery. I've had the same issues with the Tacoma as I have with the ridgeline. Gotcha. And so for 2020, I mean, if just running your hand over it, this is definitely going to help. It's yeah. still more you, slippery. You've got some grit there. Like if, yeah. you, if you have some pressure on it, you're not going to slide. It's still more slippery than what you'd get it from a spray-in bed liner on steel, but it's better. It's improved. And then pop the new trunk. I mean, like I said, it's only an inch smaller length and width, so it's pretty negligible. You could fit a lot of stuff in this trunk. Oh yeah, there's tons of room in it. <laughs> it's super cool. That's where the bodies go. And that's the only truck, you know, and truck that offers a trunk. And definitely a unique proposition on this ridge line. So the other thing we can talk about while we're back here is towing. We do have a two inch hitch receiver on our new ridge line, just like the old ridge line. But here's my big complaint, okay? Here on 2020, you have a seven pin light connection and that's it. For the second gen Ridgeline, they eliminated that four pin light connection, which seems so strange to me, considering that the Ridgeline can only tow 5,000 pounds. So it's usually only towing small trailers, and yet they only give you a seven pin. Now on the old truck, you see it right there, seven and four. She's a little rusty, but Super it's right rusty, there. But it's there, and that's a strange decision to me. Uh, like I said, the tow rating didn't change, 5,000 pounds on the old and 5,000 pounds on the new. However, they got rid of that four pin. All right, everybody, we're going to put this 08 Ridgeline to the test now. We're going to do zero to 60 runs in both trucks and see what we're talking about. So come to a stop, let the GPS calibrate. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Find your zero. Come on. Come on. And ready for the race. Hit it. Whoa! It's actually not bad off the line. <laughs> Retake! <laughs> What RPM does the VTEC come on? About four grand, give or take. Yeah, you hear it get louder, and there's a hundred. So that was a hundred kilometers an hour in 10.7 seconds. And I don't know, my gut told me that it actually felt pretty good. <laughs> what do you think about the power in this truck? Ever had I a mean, problem? I have yet to be wanting for more. Not, I think not that I've towed a lot of weight with it or anything, but like in just day-to-day -day traffic and driving, I certainly haven't ever been duck for power. With the five speed, I really felt it off the line. However, the shift in the second, you kind of felt it fall off too. So I'm really curious bit. to see how the nine feels. All right, everybody, now we're in the new ridge line and we're gonna do our zero to 60 run. So we pull up here, we stop. I do have it in sport mode. This truck has sport. So you'll see okay, it'll turn to we're zero. At four, we're at zero and, and ready for the race. Still one, still looking for zero, still looking for zero. Looking oh. for your GPS. I'm it's moving okay. forward to get closer to the glass. It's okay. And ready for the race. Here we go. Well, that stuck me in my seat good. Oh, okay. Yeah, quick shift. 44, 56. And getting there, getting there. Go VTEC. 102. All right. So, getting, getting close on the numbers here. What was our 0 to 100? Uh, 0 to 100 was 8.5. Seconds. Okay. And I'll tell you, the shifts were way shorter. First, second, and third, because this is a nine speed, you could feel them bang off way quicker than oh, in the yeah. old truck. There was no lag like on my truck. Yeah, absolutely. Nicely done, Ridgeline. Now let's move inside. And needless to say, a lot has changed in 12 years. 
So this is the interior on our 2020 Ridgeline Black Edition. This thing is fully loaded. It has all the options. You can see pretty cool push button transmission down there. You're getting the infotainment screen. You get this big center console with this sliding door on it and all that storage space. Push button ignition. You're getting a screen up here in the driver's info center. Down here to the left of the wheel, there's still a collection of buttons for a number of different things. But uh, overall, quite a nice interior. Because it's the black edition, everything's blacked out, plus you get the stitching in these seats. And uh, let me quickly show you the back seat too, because the back seat actually hasn't changed that much. These are still Honda's magic seats, so the bottoms of them come right up like that, get totally out of the way. And you can see it fits this air conditioner quite nicely. Now we'll swing over to Matt's truck, and Matt's sitting up there. First though, I want to take a look at your back seat here, Matt. Exact same seat design. Yeah, exact same, right? You pull the handle, she lifts up, yeah. that guy might, locks yeah, down. that doesn't lock oh, down. Oh, it doesn't like to lock that, down. Uh, that might be a product <laughs> of being an 08. Yeah, that's fair. But still, you know what? I love the fact that you get all this space on the floor. It's fairly flat, except for that plastic channel. But compared to other trucks, you know, there's really not a lot of stuff down there that gets in the way. All right, now we'll pull up to the front, and you can show us what's going on. Up here in this well, beauty. You thought your sliding panel was cool. I got a whole sliding console. Nice. It opens right up. This thing, I didn't know anything about it because I hadn't spent a lot of time in the older trucks, but this thing's a Swiss Army knife. This extends. I got this other panel in here that can move back and forth, revealing additional storage everywhere else. This guy's got a little hidden pouch in it. Nice. And then, of course, this slides forward to give me a little bit of Better extra armrest. lean room there. But if you put the whole thing away, you got tons of space down here to put stuff. And I mean, this thing was just, it was one of these things, I brought it home and I first couple of days I'm driving it, I'm like, oh, oh, there's another pouch. Oh, there's another pouch. Oh, there's another pouch. That seems to be the find way. places. This is, uh, this is where my wife has now started to store all of her things. Um, just, it's collected <laughs> stuff. And I mean, here's little things. I like having all these options. I did a little plumbing job at my mother-in-law's cottage the other night. Just, it's got tons of places for everything. And uh, and that's actually, let me mention now, that's there's more storage in here at hand than in the new model for sure. They got yeah. rid of a lot of stuff. They got rid of this. They got rid of this whole sliding console. Yeah. I've seen a lot of guys putting baskets down here because you can clear underneath and yeah. you have an extra place to put more stuff. Um, and as far as layout goes in here, I mean, I like the column shifter versus the, the nine speed button because that also eats up a lot of space down here, it which does. I have picked up in storage. Sure. Um, of course, just pretty much a basic radio. You still have an auxiliary port. Any USBs in this truck or is too old for USBs? Um, I mean, I made my own. Gotcha. No, it does not. It did ports. not come. There was an option. Mine is an EXL, so I'm one up from base, but the touring option in this year had uh, a dongle for a USB plug-in that was actually just kind of loose in here. Got it. Um, and it also came with the nav and a six disc changer. I got a single disc because I'm <laughs> broke. <laughs> you know what? Well, once again, it comes back to the price of the truck. Right? Free. <laughs> and then the other thing I just want to bring up, because we should talk about it, is how well the interior is held up, right? Just in terms of the seats, nothing's really pulling, the, the material looks nice. The previous owner had dogs. Okay. And I spent a fair bit of time in here uh, cleaning and vacuuming and doing everything that I could, but no matter what I did, there's still some, there's dog, still hair. some dog hair in here. And I mean, it doesn't bother me. I don't dislike dogs by any stretch of the imagination. No, but that's actually a better test, and that's what I'm saying. Like, considering even with dogs, nothing's that messed nothing's up. Nothing's ripped. Here. I mean, a couple of stains here and there, but I mean, that's, that one's from me spilling my own coffee yesterday, so <laughs> I can't be upset about that. Not bad at all. One last feature we have to talk about, the swing-out tailgate on the Ridgeline. And of course, Matt's truck has it too. So Matt, swing that sucker out and then tell us uh, what you think about it. It's definitely one of the most noteworthy carryovers from the old truck to the new truck because it is your truck bed, as everybody is familiar with. And it's only got the one cable on it, so I would be a little leery about too much weight on it personally. But True. that means you get the oh, barn door style. And I mean, it's one of these features that I know when I first came out, I looked at it and I went, well, that's dumb. I'm never going to use that. But then I had the trunk and I thought, oh my goodness, I can actually walk right up to it and I can get right down inside and I'm not way back here laying on the thing trying to get at it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, kind of based on the fact that Ram copied them a little bit shows you that this was kind of ahead of its time. It's a really cool feature and I'm glad they didn't get rid of it in the new truck. Yeah, agreed. Now on the flip side, you know, Honda wasn't the first one to have a swing out tailgate, but still, I think as trucks go, it's a really clever thing.
All right, everybody, that's just about it for this one. First of all, thanks to Matt for bringing out his ridge line today. He's behind the camera now. <laughs> oh, no problem. Wait till we race my VTEC against Big Green. There you go. <laughs> so I think the big takeaway looking at first gen to second gen Ridgeline is that the truck actually didn't really change that much. They brought it into the modern era for sure, and they made it, I think, a little bit more appealing to the masses. But overall, I think Honda decided it has a product that has a small but dedicated fan base. So let's just keep on building that same product for them. And personally, I think it worked. This is a great little mid-sized truck. It might not be the truckiest truck out there, but it will get most jobs done that you have to do. So everybody, like I said, that's it for this one. Go below, let us know what you think of uh, old Ridgeline versus new Ridgeline. And as always, while you're down there, leave a comment, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See you guys.